Hello and welcome to TVC News at 6. We we'll begin this hour in the nation's capital where the Nigeria Labour Congress has continued its protest over the prolonged strike by university workers and closure of the nation's public universities. The mega rally in Abuja is coming a day after NLC holds nationwide protests to draw the attention of government to the lingering ASU strike and its effect on Nigerian students. NLC dismissed insinuations that the rally was to discredit the ruling government to Labour Party's advantage, but says the aim was to support the protracted strike embarked upon by the Academic Staff Union of Universities, which has lasted for more than five months now. TVC News correspondent Joke Adisa reports. After Tuesday's rally across the states, the Nigeria Labour Congress on Wednesday led the four unions and the universities to register their displeasure over the over five month old strike. Security presence was visible following intelligence reports of a likely infiltration of the protest by some undesirable elements. From the Unity Fountain through the streets of Abuja to the Federal Secretariat and finally to the National Assembly, the message was clear. The rally has shown that Nigerian people now realize what is happening. Nigerian workers, Nigerian parents, even Nigerian students have realized what's happening. We've signed agreements, and in that agreement, there is a portion where it says that after every three years, we must renegotiate. If you say OSAS is not good enough, how about U2PS? If you say U2PS is not good enough, how about if they match them and they become one? We have insecurity, gender-based violence that is going on, nobody is saying something. If you cannot govern, resign! At the National Assembly, the leadership of the parliament formally received a letter from the NLC detailing its demands. We have a documented complaint that have captured all the issues we have stated and what we expect of the parliament. If before now they have not looked at the issue as a serious issue, we want the parliament, the parliament of the Nigerian people, to take this issue very seriously. No civilized country in the world where students in the university will be away from classroom for five months. Not to talk of eight months. Not to talk of months more. So we are with you. Ayu Bawaba describes as baseless reports that the protest was politically motivated. Is it a serious issue? Does it call for action? Have NLC not mediated behind the scene? Have NLC not tried to resolve the issue? That is the issue. So, basically, it's about diverting our attention. Nigerian workers cannot be divided. The, the attention cannot be diverted. All the university-based unions led by the Nigeria Labour Congress have spoken in one voice. The expectation arising from this mega rally is that the federal government will ensure the reopening of the public universities by meeting the demands of the striking university workers. And in the event that this fails, NLC says a nationwide strike becomes inevitable. Joke Adisa, TVC News, Abuja. Was staying with education, the Nigerian Senate has called on the Joint Admissions and Matriculations Board to increase the cut of marks for students going into tertiary institutions to study education courses in order to get the best brains into the teaching profession. The Vice Chairman, Senate Committee on Basic and Secondary Education, stated this while monitoring the ongoing national personnel audit by the Universal Basic Education Commission. Helen Osamede Akins reports. The Joint Admission and Matriculation Board and Tertiary Education Stakeholders in Abuja adopted 140 as the minimal cut of mark for the 2022 admission into the nation's universities, hundreds for polytechnics and colleges of education. This has not gone down well with many who argued it will encourage underachievement and reduce standards in an education system that is battling quality issues. It is an issue that came up when the Senate's Committee on Basic and Secondary Education undertook the monitoring of the ongoing national personnel audit of the Universal Basic Education Commission. The vice chairman of the committee believes that the teaching profession should not be a dumpy ground for students who fail to secure admission to other professions like medicine, engineering, and law. When you fail in having quality teachers 
to lay that foundation, the entire system will fail. So uh, government also has uh, the responsibility of provision of infrastructure. Yes, in most schools, when we go out for inspection, um, you will see uh, dilapidated uh, buildings. You will see classrooms without chairs. That is why I personally, all my capital projects, all my constituency projects, I push them to the educational sector. As the Senate committee went around some schools in the FCT to monitor the ongoing national personnel audit by the Universal Basic Education Commission, it calls for more investment in basic education in the country. The 2022 National Personnel Audit by the Universal Basic Education Commission will enable the Commission to collect accurate data on school enrollments, the number of teachers and other personnel in the system, as well as facilities, among others. Helen Osamede A. Kings, TVC News, Abuja. We're staying in the National Assembly, but this time our attention shifts to security. The Senate Minority Caucus has issued a six-week ultimatum to President Muhammad Buhari to tackle the security challenges facing the country. The lawmakers have threatened to begin impeachment proceedings against the president if he fails to address insecurity within the period. The minority senators also staged a walkout at today's plenary over failed attempts to impeach the president on state of the nation, particularly on the issue of insecurity. This development comes as one of the recent concerns and threats to security in major parts of the country. Now, let's tell you that security has been tightened in Abuja and heavy weaponry deployed to strategic locations. But residents and business operators are yet apprehensive in the wake of growing threats of terror attacks in and around the nation's capital. Sifon Essien reports. Residents of Abuja go about their businesses, but with some concerns over security. Reports have continued to make the rounds of plots by terrorists to attack the nation's capital, triggering apprehension. The federal government's directive shutting down the federal government call at Kuali in the wake of the security breaches in Kuali has forced schools to hurriedly shut down for the session. At this school in the Buari Area Council, parents scramble to pick up their children. Majority, they are thinking, they will not return to this school because the surrounding is no longer safe. Why would I return a daughter back to a school whereby the next moment you start hearing the sound of the machine gun? The security network, well, we are seeing soldiers now manning a uh, war weapon everywhere. But that's not all about it. Further down the road is an Nigerian law school, which according to reports, was a target of a plot by terrorists. We were not allowed to film inside the school, but normal activities are ongoing within the premises, except that ceremonies for the call to bar scheduled to hold in the premises have now been shifted elsewhere. Outside the premises of the law school, there are growing concerns over security. I feel so disappointed. I feel so discouraged even to come back to this place again. Because earlier, I was here since 19, I think 19, 1999, up to this point. I've never had or been encountered with such experience that I had yesterday night. So I'm very, very disappointed. Despite the deployment of heavy weaponry by security forces, residents are anxious. There is an air of apprehension. Residents and in these business operators say any further breach of security within the area council would have far-reaching consequences. What they want at the moment is for the federal government to take proactive measures to ensure security of lives and property in the entire area council. Sifon ACN, TVC News, Abuja. 
Away from the nation's capital, in Bayelsa, natives of Ibumotru Kingdom have cried out over the continuous stationing of security personnel in the community. Weeks after an alleged combined team of military officers and surveillance contractors stormed the town in an operation that has left a good number of houses and valuables destroyed, with some civilians injured in the process. They came up with this at a press briefing held in Yenogwa, the state capital. We have details in this report. These disturbing scenes were recorded in the aftermath of the alleged attack in Ibumotoro. Maiming and beating of ordinary civilians are among the crimes said to have been perpetrated by the military, as narrated by the natives. With fears of repeat scenarios in the coming days, the leaders of the community alongside other stakeholders are in Yenagua to raise alarm over the purported incident taking place in the town. As I speak now, the military houseboat, which is situated in the Gumatoro One community, has become a problem. 22 of June, till date, we have not experienced peace. The military, the dialogue, security, each time they like, they come to invade us, we run to the bush. Like this morning, before even uh, I could wake up, 6 o'clock, I saw these boys. They were destroying properties, even our churches. We are destroyed. Others are critical of the sponsors of the dastardly acts in the town, calling for a thorough investigation as soon as possible. They are not happy that the community has come together. So all they have done is to use Dalon to invade the community. And the truth is, under the pretense that there is a problem in the community, there is no problem in the community. And in any event, soldiers don't have no powers whatsoever to invade any community. The Constitution of Nigeria is very clear, section 20, 217 to 218. Yesterday, we got a call from the state government for a meeting uh, that is scheduled for Friday next week. But even after we got that call, these terrible dehumanizing acts are still being perpetrated and nothing is being done. We're asking that the international community get involved in this. Now, even if the military will have to act, they have a standard code of conduct. It is not being respected in Igbomotoro communities. While the course of the alleged military operation remains unclear, the management of Dalong Oil and Gas Limited in a recent press release has since distanced itself from any involvement in the alleged operation in Igbomotoro. The General Superintendent of Deeper Life Bible Church says the unity of the country should be non-negotiable and Nigerians should guard against anything that would create division. William Kumuyi stated this while on a courtesy visit to the Vice Chancellor of Lagos State University of Science and Technology, Dr. Luremi Olale. The clergyman's visit is ahead the upcoming crusade tagged, tagged Global Crusade with Kumuyi. We're concerned about the country. We're concerned about what's the future of our country. We argue about this and argue about that, about uh, safe base and, you know, uh, candidates and all a lot of things going on. I want to say, let's stop fighting each other. Let's stop uh, kind of confronting each other. Let's stop opposing each other. Let's step back. Let's give God a chance to walk in us, to walk through us, and to walk through in this country. And then to touch people everywhere through Nigeria, Africa can become greater. The federal capital, and to um, judicial matters now, the federal capital territory high court has ordered the former accountant general of the federation, Ahmed Idris, be remanded in Kujé Correctional Facility until hearing of his bail application. Presiding Judge Justice Adeyemi Ajayi made the order after taking arguments for and against the bail application. Counsel to Mr. Idris, Chris Uche, prayed the court to admit the defendant to bail in liberal terms as the alleged offenses are bailable. Opposing the bail application, counsel to the EFCC, Rotimi Jacobs, held that the court should look at the gravity of the alleged offenses to refuse bail. The matter was adjourned till 28th July for ruling on the bail application. 
Former AGF and his co-defendants are facing a 14-count charge of stealing and criminal breach of trust to the tune of 109.4 billion naira. And to electoral matters, the Independent National Electoral Commission says it is still in possession of more than 300,000 permanent voter cards. The commission lamented the low turnout of people to collect their PVCs during a tour of some registration centers in River State. Senior reporter Uchi Okuru reports. INEC has registered almost 300,000 new voters since the 28th of June 2022. This is in addition to almost 200,000 applications for PVC transfer and replacement. But if you take these figures as a sign of the electorate's enthusiasm to vote, the number of uncollected PVCs might leave you with second thoughts. For INEC's National Commissioner who is on a walking visit to River State, the post-registration response leaves much to be desired. With regards to the distribution of new PVCs, 54,945 have been received, but only 10,373 have so far been collected, leaving an outstanding balance of 44,572,000 for transfers and replacements. Of those, 16,949 were received. Only 1,790 have so far been collected. From the old PVCs, we have on record 302,297 cards, but only 33,575 were collected. Before the resumption of the continuous voter registration last month, more than 250,000 PVCs had not been collected. As the exercise winds up again and another backlog looms, my next appeal to the voters may not be enough. We had planned that as soon as this uh, CVR is concluded, we're going to strategize on how we're going to do the collection because the collection has been quite poor and quite slow. And we also want to use a lot of publicity road shows. Even this evening, we had I had discussed with the, the team here in, in Rivers, um, as soon as this meeting is over, we're going to have our own meeting on management meeting on how we're going to strategize with regards to collecting of the PVCs. The electoral umpire insists that the registration will end on the 31st of July 2022 at the end of the two-week extension period. Uche Okoro, TVC News, Port Hackett. Elsewhere, governments at all levels have been urged to leverage on the opportunity provided by information and communication technology to provide job opportunities for youths in the country. This is the submission of some ICT experts at the closing of Oshun Tech Summit held in Oshubo to train some secondary school girls. Correspondent Rafi Hamid reports. It's an event for selected secondary school girls in public and private schools across the state. For the past six months, they've been undergoing training in their various locations to bridge gender gaps in technology. Tagged harnessing the tech potentials of girls in Oshun State, it was organized by Leadership Institute in collaboration with the U.S. Consulate General in Lagos. Panelists say the summit will drive conversation of development through information and communication technology as well as skills among girls in the state. The government should actually um, divert tax, right, to um, see how more, uh, maybe laptops, more um, ICT centers, innovation hubs, um, um, scholarships to these students so that they can, you know, um, be able to do more in, 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 in tech space, right? Once you have a passion, then you know where you want to go to, then you can start pushing that line. There are so many resources out there for free. You don't even have to pay for anything at this moment. The program will also bring about employment opportunities for the girls. Um, it's been a great, a, a wonderful project. Um, it's been an eye-opener for us going around Ocean State, training 300 school girls. And of course, it's also a revelation to where we are as a people because in many of these places a lot of the kids have not even been able to use a computer at any point until the training happened. Um, so for us it's ensuring that the future is secured, the STEM education future of the state is secured and then of course the conversation of development through ICT is secured in the state. Participants describe the program 
as an eye opener. I gained, I learned how to make a website using HTML. I also learned how to make cartoons and other animations using Scratch from this program on Sugar Sky Co. I intend to share my knowledge with my, with my other female colleagues in order to improve um, the technology in Nigeria. There was a three-day conference on um, training about um, app event or um, web programming and Scratch. So that actually gave me the platform to develop skills on how to create a website, on how to create animations, and on how to develop the promise to make judicious use of the opportunity. Rafi Hamid, TVC News, Ushubu. And now to Nasarawa, where the state government has flagged off the construction of 25,000 housing units in Karun, local government area. The project, which is in partnership with Domac Shelters Limited, would be grouped into 11 estates and will occupy 1,000 hectares of land. Godwin Aguam reports. Karu is a local government in Nasara State and the gateway to the Federal Capital Territory, Abuja. This has resulted in astronomical growth in the population of residents in the local government. The shortage in affordable accommodation is already posing a threat to residents of the area and the state government is not oblivious of this. To cope these challenges, the Nasara State Government has been partnering with investors for the provision of housing in the area. Recently, the state government entered into partnership with Dumak Shelters Limited to provide 25,000 housing units for residents of the area. Today, the government is here to set the tone for the commencement of the project. Determined to get in as many investors as you can get, because only then that a state like Nasara can develop. I'm quite impressed with the resolve, the doggedness, and the zeal of the chairman and CEO. What, what that means is that automatically, even from the construction phase, all the sons and daughters of Nasarawa State in this area will be gainfully employed. Unemployment will no longer be an issue in this area and by extension around Nasarawa State as soon as the construction of this city commences. The partners are sure of their commitment to see the success of the project. This project is a global project. Why I decided to involve the government of Nasarawa State is just one reason. I wouldn't have disturbed or troubled your, your leadership, sir, to come in here. But I promised my clients who had so much complaint that that road is an hindrance to this project. And I promised them, I said, the government will come and you people will see the government and they will tell you what they will do about that road. Locals of Cairo are optimistic that the project would bring the more desired development to their domain. The project, when completed, would address the housing needs of residents of Cairo and decongest the city center. TBC News, Cairo.